esteem other better than themselves. <laughs> Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. Therefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Altogether, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for the privilege once again, O oh God, for us to gather together in your name. Lord, we just pray this morning, be the one to be exalted. Holy Spirit, be the one to continue to move freely in our midst, O oh God. Be the one to be exalted. Exalt the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For without you, God, we cannot do anything. Lord, please bless thy word this morning. Give me wisdom and understand, understanding to thy people, O oh God. Be the one to be uh, uh, praised in all the things that we do behind this pulpit, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <coughs> Amen. So I'm just uh, about. <laughs> okay, so praise the Lord for uh, this morning. We're going to study uh, these verses from the book of uh, Philippians, chapter uh, 2, verses 1 to 11. And we're going to get some verses from chapter 1, chapter 3, or from other verses. <coughs> the title of my uh, sermon this morning The Duty of a Christian and the Way to Unity. The duty of a Christian and the way to unity. This not uh, the Puerto related to the ni brother Raji na sorry, preach more unity. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, that it just happened that I, that the Lord gave me this message. So uh, praise God and uh, let's continue to uh, be instructed by the Word of God and be uh, be blessed and be encouraged. In the, if, and if it need be, be corrected by the Word of God. Okay. So uh, here we can see that. In spite of all the beautiful introduction of Apostle, of Apostle Paul in chapter 1, you will see that in this, pro, in this church at the church at Philippi, they had problem in the church. They are disunited. If you're going to look at it, if you're going to look at it and read the whole book of Philippians, it's like, I don't know if I have read the, the word unity, but if you're going to look at it, Apostle Paul rebuked them because of a uh, wrong teaching and this caused by the Judaizers. You will see that in chapter 3. But here, we're going, to uh, we're going to concentrate in these verses. But we're going to study how, uh, how to uh, continue to glorify God in all the things that we do and how can, we, how can we be united in glorifying God in our life. But in spite of all the problem, Paul confidently uh, confident that God will finish the work to these people in the, in the church at Philippi. We're going to see that in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. It says here, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. His, Apostle Paul is confident in this and that he know that God will be the one to finish this, his work in this in this church that uh, uh, that in spite of everything that is happening in their church Paul is trusting God and looking unto the Lord Jesus Christ the author and the finisher of our faith that he will be the one to make all this thing to be in order what that is saying in John chapter 6 verse 29 in John 6 29 says Jesus answered and said unto them this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. So here, if you're going to look at this, in this, in this church, they're having disputings, they're, they're having, uh, they're being di uh, divided, they have, they're being envious to one another, and, and actually they're being also preaching in a wrong motive. They're trying to preach the word of God, trying to pr preach the word, maybe they're trying to please men, or maybe they're trying to please themselves. 
in which they are preaching the gospel in a way that it is their self being lifted up. That is what's happening in this church. Let us read that in, that in Philippians chapter 1, verse 15 until 18. <clears throat> it says here, Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bands. You see what they're doing? But the, uh, but the other of love, they're preaching this in love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Verse 18, what then notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached and I therein rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Paul says, whether in his process in verse 18, in whatever way they preach Christ, I am rejoicing and I'm happy. Why? It is not because of the wrong doctrine, it is not because of the wrong teaching, but Paul is happy because Christ is being preached to them. For us as a Christian, this is the one thing that we should be happy, something it should be our life. Though we are in this, still in this world, we are in a way that it is difficult for us to, uh, to survive without the Lord. But for us, as a believer, if you really have the Holy Spirit in your life, you will be happy when you hear Christ is being preached. You should be happy because there is, something, there is connection between Christ and us. And the connection of that is the Holy Spirit in our life. Because without the Holy Spirit in our life, there will be no way for us to understand the Word of God. There is no way for us to love the preaching of the Word of God. There will be a question when the word of God is being preached and you are not being encouraged. Amen. In all difficulties in our lives, <clears throat> sorry, Bob. in all difficulties about our life, when we hear the word Jesus, we know that we are related to him. We are related to him. It's something like when you say the word Arjun, I know who he is and he's my son. But for us, as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not saying that we are perfect. We are, we still commit mistakes. But whenever, whenever we hear and pre the word is being preached, there's something in us that being encouraged. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that when, when the word of God is, is being preached, the Holy Spirit is working in our life? Is enlightening our life? Is encouraging us when we are, when, when we are down? Is strengthening us when we are weak? He's giving us understanding, enlightenment to the Word of God whenever we hear the Word of God. For me, to be honest with you, I am blessed when the preachers preach in this, in this pulpit, behind this pulpit. Why? It is not because who, we, who they are, but because of the Word of God that they preach. Because whenever the Word of God is being preached, there is something in us that is uh, reacting. It's like reacting and uh, Paying attention to, that, to those words. Because we know that the word of God are quick. They are alive. And if you are really a, a Christian, this something sometimes they mis, misunderstood us when we say, oh, how you here, they are saved. And they will say, oh, don't judge. Actually, yes, we don't judge. But in a way, for you, for a person saying and professing that he is a Christian and nothing is happening to them when the word of God is being preached, there's a problem. So what would be the problem? The problem is that they are, not being, they are not being encouraged by the Word of God. Maybe, maybe, if the reason why they are not being encouraged by the Word of God because there is no Holy Spirit in them to work in them. The only one will work in our life is the Holy Spirit. But here we can see that in spite of all those things that are happening in, um, in this church, in spite of all the good introduction of uh, Apostle Paul, there is this unity. There's something that uh, we can see later on that, uh, that we need to do. And what are the things that we need to do in order for us to be united for the Lord. In Philippians, Philippians chapter 2 verse 1, it says here, if, the, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies. Here we can see the word if. Okay, the word if he, here, the if in this verse is not 
but if of doubt. Uh, but the if of arguments, Paul is trying to correct them. He's being, he has an argument with them. Paul is saying here, since there is so much encouragement in Christ, since his love has such a tremendous persuasiveness, since the Holy Spirit brings us all together in such a wonderful fellowship, and since there is so much tender affection and mercy in Christianity, we should all be able to get along in happy harm harmony with one another. Have you, need, have you seen that? If we have all these things in our life, if we have this that we have read from verse 1, we should be happy getting together, uniting for the Lord. If you're going to look at this, <clears throat> it's something like this. Uh, let me just give you <clears throat> this is something, uh, it's not, uh, it's like, you will be happy, like for example, you, they, uh, someone told you, oh, you, you go to America. You go to America, I will pay for the ticket. <clears throat> I will give you a place to stay, a condo. I will give you a car to drive when you go there. I will even give you pocket money more than enough for you to use in America. Are you going to be happy or going to be sad? <clears throat> of course, you'll be happy, right? But if you're going to look at it in verse 1, in all of these things that we have read in verse 1, there should be a way for us to be joyful and for us to be happy. And all these things can be found in the, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry, Paul. <clears throat> <clears throat> but here you can see it have you imagined that Paul is saying all of these things are with you now all of these things but still the problem you still have this problem you're being disunited when the one when the one making you united is the Lord Jesus Christ what is the problem because they're being taught a wrong doctrine. They're being, being uh, uh, what do you call this? They're being misled. Look at this. In, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Colossians 3, 12 says here, <clears throat> put, in the, put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. For us to be as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have all these things in our life. If I may say, we have all these things uh, for us to enjoy. Though we have, the, we have this problem also in this world, but the, the, the Bible says we are not of this world. This, all these things are just temporary. Look at the things that are happening now. This, all these things, all the sign of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we should be encouraged. Though it's getting harder, because of the things that, that are happening now, the good becoming bad and bad becoming good. And that is what's happening today. So we should be aware of that. And all of these things, in short, we have all the things for us to enjoy. Let us enjoy Christ because he had provided for us the things that we have now. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 2, says in verse 2, Fulfill ye, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being one accord of one mind. Paul is saying this, he's saying that fulfill ye my, fulfill ye my joy. He's not trying to uh, obligate them to, uh, to get the glory, no. Paul is saying here, do this for Christ's sake. Do this for Christ's sake. That in all of these things that you do, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being, being of one accord, of one mind. Do all this thing for Christ's sake. Anything that we do in church, inside the church, or even in our personal life, we should be doing it for the Lord. It's, I've been uh, meditating on this. Uh, that we know that we are bought by the, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we don't even own our life. We don't own it. For I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. We are bought by the price. We are bought by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we should live this life for Christ's sake. Many are saying, especially those who speak, they say, oh, for Christ's sake. They are using it just for a word, for fun. 
But for us, verse, saying the word for Christ's sake, it is because for him alone. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 says, And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, in all discernment. The Philippians had indeed given Paul much joy. He does not deny that for a moment, but now he has that that they should fill the cup, that they should fill, they should fill the cup of this joy to overflowing. They could do this by being like-minded, having the same love, and being in one accord and of one mind. Paul says, I will be happy. Have you noticed that? If you are going to do this, you do it, you do it for the Lord, and my joy will be fulfilled. And my joy will overflow. If you're going to see a brother serving the Lord faithfully, anyone, any, any brother, if you see them faithfully loving the Lord, sometimes they're not doing, they're, they're, what they're doing is only a, uh, a simple thing. But because they are doing it for the Lord, we see them and we are, getting, we are being blessed, right? And that is the thing that we should, we should do in our life. Let the Lord live in our life. And let him name, his name alone be glorified. But here we can see, in verse 3, we see, the, at least there are three things that I'm going to give. There are three steps to achieve unity. But here we see, the reason is because they are trying to steam themselves than other selves. They are trying to lift them up, lift their selves, and trying to say, like saying, Mas magaling ako yan. I'm better than him, I'm better than her. So that is the problem. In verse 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let it esteem other better than themselves. There, let, let me give you three things, three steps to achieve unity. Number one, let nothing be done through selfish ambition. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition. In the flesh, we are often motivated by selfish ambition. And we know that. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, sometimes even, you are, even if you are a Christian, and you will not allow the Holy Spirit to move on your work, you will be selfish. You will count everything and you want everything for you. If the Holy Spirit will, be not, will be, not be the one to, to guide us. What it says, it says in, in Philippians chapter 2 verse 4, it says here, let, let not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Yes, we need to give importance to ourselves, but we need also to give importance to others. And in doing that, Christ will be seen in our life. When we serve one another in love, in Galatians, it was mentioned. When we serve one another, we serve in love. And Christ is being lifted up. And Christ's commandment is being fulfilled when we do that. First, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 and 4. 3 2 to 4 says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, confident, Fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And we see all these things happening right now. Though it was mentioned 2,000 years ago. But if you're going to study it, you're going to look at it, para ngayon lang nangyayari. Have you noticed that? It's happening right now. And these things are there. The reason that these people are being selfish is because... There is no spirit in them. But for us, as a Christian, that's why, look at this, that's why this thing happened in, in, the, in, the, in the church at Philippi. Because they allowed it. They did not allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives. That's why Paul, if you will go to verse 14, says that they may be blameless and hard. Uh, 214, oh no, 212, sorry, 212. It says here, Wherefore, my beloved, that she have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 
You show that you are really saved. You show that you really have the Holy Spirit in your life. That is Paul is trying to say. In John chapter 3 verse 17. First John 3 17. But who saw at this word's good and see it his brother have, have need and shut it up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him. How can you say that you love your brother and when you see them that they are in need? I'm not saying that it is not only finances. Actually, even spiritual. When they are weak in their faith and we know that we need to help them, we help them. And we, we, and we see them and not help them. How can we say that we really, love the, we really love the Lord Jesus Christ? That's why we don't condemn. That's why we don't condemn. I'm not saying the con uh, the, about the, them. We don't condemn because we help each other. As a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 21. Look at this. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. For all seek their own, and not the things which are Jesus Christ. As I study this, you know, these are not unbelievers. These are, these are leaders. These are, maybe they have position in their church. But they seek their own. Not being sensitive to the work of the Holy Spirit. And in this, there is no way, no way can never achieve unity in our church, even in their church. Not all ambitions are bad. Alam naman po natin yan. Especially if your ambition is to glorify God in your life. Do we, are we going to do all everything for the Lord? Yes. We will do, do everything for the Lord. Us. But with our own strength, we cannot do that. We need the Holy Spirit to do this for him. When the Lord, just like the one that Pastor Joel is always mentioning, God gave the mountain, God put the mountains there, and he gave us the strength to climb them. God will be the one to provide for us, for us to do and obey his will. Number two, it says here, let nothing be done through vain glory. Let nothing be done through vain glory. Vain glory means thinking too highly of oneself, having an excessive interest and self preoccupation. And this is what they call the empty glory. If things will not be done for the Lord, those things are empty glory. But everything that we do for the Lord, they are being rewarded and they are being, being recorded in heaven. Something that we need to be excited for. We need to be uh, really, really excited. Because one day, we're going to see those things. And God will show us these things. And we will glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why in, uh, I don't know, in, in Revelation, when the crown was given to us, what are we going to do with those crown? We're going to put them at the foot of Jesus. We will bring him back all the glory. That's why anything that we do, I encourage you, church, even me, even the preachers, those who preach here, the thing that we need to do is to give glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not perfect, that I always say, but at least the Lord will see our hearts, how we are doing this for him. What does it say in Galatians chapter 5, verse 26? Let, not be this, uh, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and being one another. You know, this, this in, I have already taught this in, in Galatia, they are being desirous of vain glory. They are being proud, hearing and teaching the wrong doctrine. And those are vain glory. That's why Paul said, those are nothing. So, what everything that we do in our life, let us, all, let us all do this for the Lord. Number three. Okay. Okay. Number three, it says here, But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. What that it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. Ephesians 4, 2 says, With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering." For bearing one another in love. This is what should be our motive, our goal inside the church. And not trying to make ourselves better than others. And we, and we do this, we do it in love. Proverbs 11.2 says, 
When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. It's as if with pride cometh, then cometh shame. Have you noticed that those people who lift them up subs when failure come, they are putting in shame. But in everything that we do, if we do it for the Lord, the Lord is the one lifting us up. Though sometimes you don't know that, but He's the one lifting us up. He's the one who will give us promotion. In Romans chapter 12, verse 16, Romans 12, 16 says here, Be of the same mind, one toward another, mind not high things, but co condescend to men of low estate, be not wise in your own conceits. Be not, be not wise in your own conceit. We should always depend on the Lord. We should always depend on the Holy Spirit in our work, in everything that we do. Even in, with our plans, we should con always consider the Lord. If you are not going to, going to consider the Lord in our life, we are going to do a lot of things, but there will be vain glory. But in everything that we do, we allow the Holy Spirit to help us to move in our lives. Everything will be put in order. Look at this. In James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Have you noticed that? Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. In the, on the things that we do in our life, let the Lord be the one to see it, not other people. Though they see us, because we see a lot of things, and we have experienced that. Ito naman tayo. We have experienced that. They said they love the Lord. We thought they are really serving the Lord. But at the back of their heads, what happened? We have seen that. For me, for you to destroy the work or the church of God, who are you? This is the church of God. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And we know that. So, we thought we see them they're serving. Hopefully, we're not judging. Praying that they did this all for the Lord. That, they, that all the things that they do is the one being glorified. And even as yung po mga bagay na ginagawa po natin, sometimes people don't see. Sometimes even our pastor, sometimes each other, anyone, anyone of us. Sometimes we are doing something and we are doing it for the Lord and not being seen by others. But the Lord see it. The Father in heaven knows that. So he will be the one to lift us up. Amen. Philippians chapter 2 verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy. Sabi po rito in verse 2. I've already done with those three. Fulfill ye my, do, my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. In verse 2, is completely contradicting to the attitude of the world. They can have, have like-minded, they don't have the same love, being in one accord or in one mind. Bakit? Kanya-kanya sila eh. They are trying to lift them up themselves. Their mindset is completely different with us. Though, we are still in this world, yes, because we have the Holy Spirit. The reason why it becomes different, it is because the Holy Spirit is guiding us. Have you noticed that? Even the simple things that we do. Sometimes even the si very simple things that we forget, the Holy Spirit will remind us. There is a God in us, a powerful God, an all-knowing God, an omniscient God, all-powerful God is dwelling within us. And He is the one helping us and that's why we are different we are peculiar people a holy nation we are set for the lord they esteem themselves better than others this is the world look at this you listen to this the humility they know is actually pride the world the humility they know is actually pride not trusting the lord if you're going to look at it now People are so proud because they have a lot of things in their life. And you will not see the Lord in them. I forgot the one that I saw. He said, he said I don't need God. It's, like, it's just like saying, I don't need God. I have everything. But he forgot to look at 
Matthew 16, 26. What does it say in Matthew 16, 26? Sister Mika, could you please go there? It says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's what they are forgetting. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4 says here, let's go to our um, text in verse 4, Philippians 2, 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man on, on, those, on the things of others. In order for us to do this, this is not easy. Hindi po ito madali for us to do it with our own. Paul gave a supreme example. He gave a supreme example. And we can read that from uh, chapter 2, verse, verse 5 to 11. Paul says, this is the example that he gave. He gave the example of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says here, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let, let this attitude be like your attitude. The Lord Jesus Christ, what, on what he did and what he, he, uh, what, do you call this? what he have done for us. In verse 6, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. You know, it's like he disqualified himself for a while. I will do this for you. I will not think, even the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're going to look at it, if you're going to study it, saying that I will not esteem myself higher than you. I have, a, I, have a, I, have purp- I have a purpose and I will do this because of my Father which is in heaven. In verse 7 says, But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Have you remember when he was the apostle's feet? And what the Lord says, you do the same. What does he mean, he mean to say? You serve one another. Serve one another in love. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death to the cross. He gave himself. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. You know what? He emptied himself for us. He emptied himself for us. In verse 9, look what, the, what God says, uh, did to him. Verse 9, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That is the truth. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ is highly exalted and his name is above every name. In verse 10 says that at the name of Jesus every should bow and we will see that. Of things in heaven, things on earth, or things under the earth. And in verse 11 says that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. All of these things be done for the glory of our Father which is in heaven. And we have seen this. Paul is saying, you have seen that all those things? You're doing this because of the wrong doctrine, because of those people who are trying to mislead you? And Paul says, look at the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we think like this. Oh, I am caring for one another. I forgot to put the... Asan ba yun? Wala. Do you know that to esteem others is more of me and not them when we esteem others? We do, esteeming others is a personal thing. Kagaya po nung sinabi ni Pastor Joel when the la, last Wednesday. When we love, we, are the, we decide to love personally. Not the other person to do that to you. Even in esteeming others, to esteem others is a personal thing. Tayo magano magpapakumaba, hindi sila para sa atin. That is what it meant. And these things are not easy. Christ, we have seen that Christ is the example of humility and sacrifice. Paul is, Paul is like saying, you have seen the example of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do this. If I'm going to summarize it, if I'm going to paraphrase it, it's something like this. If we do this by our own, there's nothing we can ac- accomplish. You follow the leader. And then we can accomplish things. If we follow the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, we will be able to finish a lot of things. Not because of us. But if we're going to follow our life, 
Alam niyo, mangyayari sa atin, kanya-kanya tayo. We are like sheep gone astray. That's who we are. If these things is difficult, don't worry, there is a promise and I will close in this. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, and if you think this is something that hard, look at this. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Have you seen that? Being confident. Paul saying, I am confident that he which had begun a good work in you, the one who started this in your life will be the one to finish it. You know, a lot of people that are expecting that when someone promises, it will happen. Sometimes, mostly, it's not happening, right? But this one, we can hold on to it. The Lord promised, don't worry. Uh, something like this. I started that for you. I will finish that for you. And he can do that because he's God. He's powerful. And his promise will never be gone away. Alam po natin yan. Not even a, a, a dot or a tit or period or whatever will not be lost from the word of God. And I hope this encourages us to continue to do the things for the Lord. And if we do this in uniting, we're going to unite for the Lord. You know, one last thing. If we esteem others better than ourselves, we're going to meet all together in unity in glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all stand up and let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, Lord, this morning. We are so